to see if it's really me still alive. But I am. And I'm grateful to be at Nettleton again. I don't know if I mentioned yesterday. The first meeting I had at Nettleton was 55 years ago this month. And all that tells you is that I'm older than dirt. But I've always enjoyed the meetings that I've had with this church, and I remember with great love. A lot of people who were here back in those years who have gone on to their reward. But I'm grateful to be here tonight. It is a little bit concerning to me that I'm stuck between an eclipse and an NCAA men's basketball college championship game coming up at about 8 o'clock. I got 45 minutes. And that's more time than I need. In the verses that were just read in your hearing a few moments ago, we see the shadow of some wonderful things that are to come. I know that sometimes we can see the shadow of a thing, although we cannot see the substance. And we might sense something of the beauty of the substance simply by observing the shadow that we can see. I understand that for 1,500 years, the people of God were lovingly led by their hand to the time of Jesus Christ. In that law was a shadow that would be unfolded in the person of Jesus. And some beautiful, beautiful things can be seen and can be enjoyed by us tonight as a result of the substance of Jesus Christ, our Lord. There is in that uh, shadow the foreshadowing of Jesus Christ and His beautiful church. And when I think about that, the church all over the world. Good feelings rush all over me because I love the blessed church of Christ which Jesus built. In this pattern, in Luke chapter 14, we see the coming of another who would take away our sin. No truth is more established in the Bible than the truth that in order for one to be set free, another must die. And we see that as we come on through the entire New Testament. The cleansing of the leper is such a beautiful thing when you think about the life of a leper. No cure was known. You couldn't call medical people wherever or however they might be in that time and find a cure. You couldn't go to the king or to the governor and find a cure for leprosy. There was one thing that everybody knew, and here it is. If you're going to be cured of leprosy, you had to deal with God. That's all there is to it. There isn't any other way to even think about that. Leprosy begins maybe with a little spot on the back of a person's hand. It's insignificant at first. It's something that we think will go away in a short time. But it spreads. The hair begins to fall out. The teeth fall out. The eyes and the nose sinks back into the bones. It's an awful sight. I've never seen it personally, but as I've studied about it, I know that it's an awful, awful sight. 
And there's no hope for that leper except as he deals with God. There is an abominable odor that goes forth from that leper, and whoever sees and smells becomes drastically ill. It's an awful thing. That person finally is sent outside the camp, separated from all the other people, because they don't want to be infected by it themselves. Lastly, he experiences a horrible, horrible death. He dies a horrible, horrible death. Now, sin works on us in a similar way. Somebody says, well, it won't hurt for me to miss this Sunday. So they miss it. And then a couple of of Sundays later, it won't hurt to miss that Sunday. And it goes on and on until finally that person is on a visitation list or something. But sin has a lot of blood and it goes on and on affecting others. And after a while, the problems become so severe that they are going to be stopped. He's been tempted in all points like as we are, and yet he was without sin. He suffered all of the same things that we've suffered and overcome those things. King Jesus. I heard a man pray just a few years ago. And I always loved to hear him pray. He, he was a member of a small church up close to Clarksville. And he's died now. And when he would close his prayer, he would always say, In the name of the angel of Jesus. And some people got upset. Jesus is not an angel. 
But when he used the word angel, like we might say, my, my lady called her name one of our grandkids and great grandkids angel. Now each one knew who she was speaking to. But each one of them was angel. Well, Brother Cletus talked about angel Jesus. And I just love it. The priest takes that earthen vessel and he puts water into it. Jesus came up, gave up the glories of heaven to come down here not because he just wanted to get out of heaven he came seeking and saving the lost the priest kills one of those little clean birds and he extracts from it every drop of blood that he can possibly get And he pours that blood into an earthen vessel with water. This brings to my memory another story. 1 John chapter 5 and the verse 6 says, This is he that came by blood and water. Jesus. He came by blood and and water. The nails had been driven into his hands and his feet. And there he hangs suspended between heaven and earth as though neither wanted him. Excruciating pain. And there he hangs. For six agonizing hours. crown of thorns on his head. Thorn. We had a couple of thorn trees right out of, almost in our front yard down in Herman Junction. And I hated those things. It doesn't feel good when one gets in your foot. And several of them did that through the years. The crown of thorns pressed down upon his head and the blood flowing down his face, maybe to his feet. There he hangs. During that time, one who was being crucified would stand up on his tippy toes to try to get a, another breath of life. And maybe a little relief from the pain. Then the soldiers would come with their mallets and break the legs so they couldn't do that. But there's something you know about this that when they came to break the legs of Jesus, they didn't get to do it. He was already dead. Isn't it amazing? that all the soldiers of Caesar's army combined could not break the little finger of the Son of Almighty God. It had been said that the Lamb would have no broken bone. And indeed, this is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. And so they didn't break his leg. The priest now takes that live bird And he ties that bird to the cedar wood. He wraps it with scarlet and he dips it with the hyssop into the blood of that dead bird. He sprinkles it seven times on that bird or on that leper. And he pronounces him clean. Can you imagine how that leper must have felt? Jesus going through this procedure. Or the priest. And then he pronounces him clean. There's power in that blood. 
but there's cost in that blood. You see, there is cleansing. And when cleansing comes, it comes through power. But it also comes at great cost. I wonder how much it would cost us to do to clean up our nation of sin. Another shooting today. Two people killed. It's just a common thing on the news. Doesn't excite us much anymore. Doesn't uh, bring any feelings about us in, uh, from us anymore to read about some sickened person going on a rampage and killing people, innocent people. What would it cost us to have such a force of police that we could stop all that? What would it cost? What would it cost to get rid of cancer and Alzheimer's and all other diseases? What would it cost? I know this. The cost of all of those things combined that we might think about tonight are completely insignificant compared to the cost of your sins and mine. It cost Jesus his blood. It cost Jesus his blood. Or more than 65 years. I've gone all over this country telling the story of Jesus. I have urged people and urged people and begged people to obey the gospel of Christ, to be baptized for the remission of their sins. And here's one. You've got to be washed in the blood of Jesus to be free from the guilt of sin. There isn't any other way. Having the blood of birds sprinkled upon you won't do it. This is why I have taught people to be baptized. It's not because we have a church manual of some kind that says the church believes that people ought to be baptized. Or you can be that you you can be saved out here in some way, but then you've got to be baptized in order to become a member of our church. I don't preach baptism for the remission of sins, just to hammer people over the head. I preach it because there is no other way of cleansing. None. Zip. No way to be cleansed from sin except to be washed in the blood of the Lamb. It's in Romans chapter 6. Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into His death? Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead to the glory of the Father, even so we also shall walk in nearness of life. Galatians 3. For you are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ did put on Christ. You can argue with those passages from now till the cows come home. They still mean what they say. And that's why I preach baptism for the remission of sins. Because there is no other way to be set free. In order for one to be set free, one has to die. That little bird that's still alive is dipped in the blood of that dead bird. 
and then is taken out to an open field and set free. Why an open field? Today, while the eclipse was, before it was going on, and I just rode around a bit, and the old highway between here and Bay, they've never been so full since we quit picking cotton. <laughs> People out there, some of them out in the field, out in the open field, so they could see better. And this little bird is taken out to an open field where the trees and nothing else will stand in its way. And it soars off into the heaven with the blood of that dead bird upon it. Wouldn't it be something to hear that leper say, I want my leprosy back. I won't be free from it anymore. I want to smell like it used to smell. I want to give off this order that I once had to everybody that comes around. I want my leprosy back. You think that person would be absolutely <coughs> insane? Let me ask you something. Is it any less strange tonight when a member of the church says, I want my sin back. I'm going to quit. The preacher hurt my feelings. The elders made me mad. So I'm not going to come back. Listen, I'm not making this up. I've heard this all my preaching life. People have just quit. Saying in effect, I want my sin back. Peter says that such people are like the dog that was eating his own vomit, and the sound that was washed was turned to wallow in the mire. One who died. That another might be set free. And here we are. Somebody say, I want my sin back. Crucifying the Son of God afresh and putting him to an open shame. I mentioned last night or yesterday morning. How many people do you think there are in Zonesboro, Arkansas that at one time were baptized into Christ, but tonight either are not going to any assembly or are going to the New Life Church or something like that. They quit. They want their sin back. They think that le uh, leper was absolutely insane to want his leprosy back, but here they are in effect saying, I want my sin back. That's why I ask people today. Come, confess your sin. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Repent of your sin. And be baptized into Christ for the remission of your sin. That's why I do it. That your leprosy is gone? Are you sorry that that condition which you once had is now gone and you're free from your leprosy? Mr. Leper? I want to ask
that question to me. Are you sorry that your sins were forgiven? Are you sorry that you were made clean by the blood of the Lamb of Almighty God? Are you sorry? I want to ask that lady. What do you think of that little bird? That died. That one bird soared off into the heaven. And I want Christians to soar off into the heavens of service in the kingdom of God. That's the way we're going to take the gospel to the world, not sitting on church pews. What do you think of that little bird, Mr. Lincoln? That little bird was innocent. He didn't do anything. They were instructed to get two birds, two clean birds, and take them to the priest. That little bird didn't do anything wrong, but he died that that leper would be made free. What do you think of that bird, Mr. Leper? You gonna stomp it in the ground? Throw it in the weeds? You're going to bury it with respect. Now I want to ask you. Why do you think of that Jesus? Why do you think of that Jesus? Who came from the portals of glory down to this sin, cursing world? Walked among us, suffered more than we could ever suffer, and finally died. What do you think of that Jesus? Some people say, I don't believe he's the Son of God. He was just a, a notable character in our history, but he has nothing to do with saving us. Is he worth only an occasional uh, attendance at the assembly just once in a while? Is it worth about a dollar out of your bill for when you do come? What do you think about that? Jesus? Will you respect him? Will you love him? Will you be grateful for your cleansing? Will you be ready to serve Him all the days of your life with full commitment? Not halfway, but full commitment? What do you think about Jesus? <coughs> One day, that another man. And in our case, that one was Jesus Christ. The Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He died that James might live and that I might live and you might live. Jesus died for that. He didn't just come to make a spectacle of himself or to to become well known and famous and all of that. Jesus came for one thing and that was to bring cleansing to every last one of us. What do you think of that Jesus? He died that you might do. And so do I. I invite you to come turning away from your past sins, confessing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God by the glory of the Father, and be baptized for the remission of your sins. Maybe you're a child of God and you've just been lollygagging alone. Not committed. 
not out of love and devotion, just to be a member of the church. You need to repent and commit yourself to serving God faithfully and soar off into the heights of service to God. There's plenty for every one of us to do. You don't have to go to Romania like some of us do. You don't have to go to Africa. You can go out here 30 something Highland Drive or across the street or next door. Soar in the heavens as that clean bird did in service to God. If you need to come to Jesus, I hope you will while I stand and sing. Thank you.